All right, yo, what's up guys? It's Nelson here and today we are gonna go over five ways that you can effectively pitch your music to music supervisors, okay? Now, before we get into that, what I wanna talk about quickly is these three things that you have to consider before pitching your music and before reaching out to a music supervisor, right? First thing is you want to research their time zone. Now, research is crucial and we all know that, but these little things you should definitely pay attention to. So research their time zone, all right? You don't want to send emails um, you don't want to send music or links or anything like that to a person before their business hours or after their business hours, okay? You kind of want to time it when you think that they're opening up emails or timing it when it's most popular to open up emails. That's something to consider because you want your email open. So if you know their time zone, then you can easily figure out when you should be sending these emails, which brings me to the next thing you should consider before you're pitching your music to supervisors. Learn their social media language. So what is a social media language? If you find a supervisor and you start to network and you decide that you wanna follow them on Instagram or Facebook or Twitter, watch the things that they post, watch how often they post, keep an eye on when they post, and maybe they're a playful person, maybe they're more serious, but keep an eye on that. If you learn their social media language, you have a better opportunity of, you know, networking with them, building a relationship instead of this, you know, doing the regular, regular, you know, like, oh, hey, how's the weather? You know, you have to understand these little things because you want the relationship to build organically and you want the relationship to be built to last. All right. So keep that in mind before you start reaching out to supervisors. All right. You're going to research their time zone and then you're going to learn their social media language. How do they act on social media? When do they post? What do they talk about? Right. That's going to help you. Thirdly, you want to figure out who they work for. Most people don't think about that. Not all music supervisors work for production companies, okay? Not all music supervisors work for music libraries. In fact, some of them work for themselves. So that's all going to determine how you actually reach out to them. Are you going to reach out to their boss? Are you gonna reach out to someone on their team? Are you gonna to attempt to reach out to them directly? You know, sometimes there are chains that you have to go up in order to reach someone. So for instance, if they run their own music supervision company, do they have a team? Do they have a social media manager? Do they have someone in charge of their day to day, right? It's all gonna involve research and those are things that you should consider before you even think about pitching to music supervisors directly because you want your chances to be on point, all right? So without further ado, let's hop into five ways that you can effectively pitch your music to music supervisors, all right? So first on that list, I have Disco. Now, Disco is a music management platform that was created by music supervisors for artists, producers, composers, and music supervisors. So the platform is very dope because it gives you a lot of different features that are great that music supervisors want, like updating metadata and really keeping things organized. So if anything, make sure you're pitching your music through platforms that aren't giving links that expire, that don't come off super complicated, you know, something that's easy and sleek for them to use. And Disco is extremely popular and a lot of music supervisors use Disco. So I would definitely recommend using Disco to pitch your music effectively to a music supervisor because it's a trusted platform and it's something that they use and that they recommend, okay? Next, you wanna get a reference. Now, this might seem a little hard. It's gonna involve some digging. It's gonna involve research, but just think about this. If you're able to get a reference from someone that the music supervisor already trusts, then you're gonna be better off, right? Think about editors, think about music coordinators, think about music editors, think about anybody that's involved in the post-production or even the pre-production 
process of getting music on film and TV, right? Network with those people because if you can get a reference, then you have a better chance of being a shoe in with the music supervisor because your name is coming from a trusted source, all right? Now, this is a little trick that I learned. Um, the third thing is to score to some of their work, okay? If you're able to find something that they worked on and you're able to score original music to something that they've worked on before, you know, that gives you an opportunity to show off your chops. It also gives you a way to show them that you did your research, right? So you did your research, found some things that they worked on, you scored original music to something that they worked on. So that could be a really, really good look for you in effectively pitching your music and what you can do um, to a music supervisor. Now, next, this one right here is I think by far the best, but if you ever get an opportunity to talk to a music supervisor or you get an opportunity to ask questions to music supervisors, always ask them, what are their favorite music libraries, okay? Sometimes it might be listed in their bio on social media. Sometimes they might tweet it out or post it on Facebook or Instagram, what have you. Or if you happen to be at maybe a seminar or um, watching a panel where you can ask questions, ask what are their favorite music libraries to use? Because you can't go wrong with, you can't go wrong with that opportunity right? They like to get music from trusted sources. In a music library, sometimes they have relationships that span 15, 20 years, right? So again, what better way to get your music into a music supervisor's hands than going through a music library that they trust, that they visit and use often, right? Which brings me to my last tip to effectively pitch your music to music supervisors. Ask the right questions. One question that I tell everyone to ask or a variation of that question, right? Is if you get a chance to talk to a supervisor or anyone in that realm, ask them about their music selection process. The reason why you wanna do this is because you wanna know how they select music. You know, you wanna know their mindset behind selecting music because that's going to give you a leg up in pitching your music. Because now you not only know, for instance, what libraries they choose, but you know their mindset behind picking the music. Do they pick it based on tempo? Do they pick it based on what they're feeling at that moment, you know? Or do they pick the music based on what they feel at that moment? Do they pick music now and save it for later, right? Those are little things that you wanna know, things that can actually help you when pitching your music to music supervisors, okay guys? So, those are my five things that I think that you could use to effectively pitch your music to supervisors. And I've used the combination of these tips and it's proven to be successful. It's helped me land theme songs. It's helped me land countless instrumentals and full songs and TV shows. So I really think if you put these effective tips into play, that you will continue and you will start to see success in pitching directly to music supervisors, shall you go that route. All right, guys. So there we have it. Make sure if this video was helpful that you like, you comment and subscribe and make sure you share with someone who could use this information. Thank you as always for stopping by and I'll catch y'all on the sink side. Mm -hmm.